Hey everyone, Thomas from MasteringExplained.com here. Today we're going to talk about headphones and how to use headphones for mixing and mastering. I will dispel the myth that you need speakers in order to do mixing and mastering properly. And I will also make the case that in many cases it's better to use headphones instead. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so this video has three parts mainly. In the first part I will talk about why headphones are superior to speakers. There are some really good advantages of using headphones over speakers. And in the second part I will talk about the drawbacks of using headphones and the reasons as to why people are discouraged to use headphones for mixing and mastering. And in the third part we will look at some ways to mitigate those disadvantages and actually make headphones into a superior alternative to using speakers for mixing and mastering. And chances are that if you are working from a smaller studio or a studio with non-optimal acoustics or smaller speakers or whatever it may be, then you, it, there are pretty good chances that you will be better off using headphones for mixing and mastering instead. But we'll get to that in a moment. But first I wanted to talk a bit about why I have ended up using headphones instead of speakers. Because there's a story to that. So I started using headphones for mastering in around 2016 or 17. And the reason for that was that we had a studio, a nice control room that was built for mastering. We had acoustic treatment and big speakers and the whole the whole traditional mastering setup, you could say. And we, we really enjoyed this place. Uh, we liked working there and the clients liked it and everything. But we were moving, so we needed to find a new place to build our studio. And we knew that there would be a gap here. Some months that we would be without a studio. So about a year before that, we started planning how should we do with this gap? And there were several solutions to this. How, how should we fill this gap where we wouldn't have a studio available? And one of the solutions that we thought about was maybe we should try using headphones instead. We knew that you shouldn't really do that because that's what people say. But anyway, we, we decided we'd give it a try. So we tried several solutions to working in headphones. Some of them weren't as good. I will talk about this later in the video. And but one solution that we found worked really, really good. And we had the opportunity to try this out in our control room that we knew very well how it sounded and how everything translated. So we could try it out alongside using uh, regular speakers as monitoring. And it turned out that working in headphones actually had some advantages that we weren't really expecting. So at the end of our stay in this studio, both me and Sophia were actually using headphones much more than we were using the speakers. So we kind of made the transition while having this full-blown control room with speakers and everything. So when it was time to move out of this space, we, we could just pack it up and keep on working using our more portable setup instead. And that's what we did. And it, it has been working so well that when we got to our new place, we haven't really bothered building up this big studio, this big control room setting again, because it, it just works so perfectly fine using headphones instead. So that's how me and Sophia ended up using headphones for mastering. And one thing to consider when testing out these things is to see how do the clients react to the masters that they receive. And we found that we had as few revisions as we had before, maybe even a bit fewer revisions. That's the, that's the single most effective way of measuring how good something is, how good something works when you are mastering, because you get instant feedback from your clients all the time. So if they like what they hear, then you know that it works. If you get lots of revision requests, then you know that there's something off that you need to fix. And when we switched to using headphones, there were no difference in the amount of revisions, maybe a bit fewer revisions, but certainly not any more revisions than there was earlier. So we knew that this setup works. So we've just continued working this way and it works really good. And it has several advantages and that's what I'm going to talk about now. Okay, so in order to really understand the advantages of using headphones, 
when mastering or mixing, then we also need to understand what is the function of the monitoring system when we are mixing or mastering. And understanding this fundamental concept is really important, I think, because the, the purpose of a monitoring system is to translate a signal, a digital signal or analog signal, whatever, whatever it is that we want to listen to, to translate that into sound waves that can make our eardrums move and get the sound into our brain. That's the purpose of the monitoring system. We have something that we want to listen to. It's a signal of some kind. And we want to translate that into something that our brain understands. We can't look at the screen and see how it sounds. We need to get it into our ears somehow. And that's the purpose of the monitoring system. So if we look at a monitoring system as a solution to this problem, get the signal from the door into our eardrums, then we can sort of accept that using headphones, yeah, that might actually be a quite good solution to that. That's the least troublesome solution to this problem, okay? And if we look at it this way, then we can see why we have so much problems with getting loudspeakers to sound good within a room. We need to transfer all this sound, all this energy from one space, from one place in the room to our ears. And we also have this room surrounding the speakers and us as the listener, and that will influence the sound a lot. And that's why we need all this acoustic treatment in order to make the room sound good. Because sound is bouncing everywhere. We have lots of uh, different things happening to the sound wh when it travels from the speaker to the ear. So by removing the room completely, we can have a much simpler solution to this, uh, to this problem. And the result of this is that when we are using headphones, when we are using good headphones, I should add, then we get a much better representation of the low end of the bass frequencies than when we are listening to speakers within a room unless that room and those speakers are really, really good. So when you have good headphones, you would need to build a really, really good room in order to have better bass response than you can get from these headphones, okay? And if you have really good speakers and you have been able to build a room that has as good or better bass response than the good headphones, then you have probably put a lot of effort and a lot of money into that room and into those speakers. So, so, so if we compare the prices of these, we we'll see that it's, it's a huge difference. Good headphones might cost a bit, but it's very cheap compared to building a room and bu buying the speakers that would have equal performance in the low end. Okay? And another big advantage of using headphones is portability. You can use your headphones in whatever environment you want, as long as it's reasonably quiet and you feel comfortable, then you can use your headphones and have the exact same monitoring system that you have otherwise. And for me and Sofia, this is a big advantage. We can work here in the studio or we can, we can work at home or we can work when we are traveling. You need to, of course, manage your free time versus work time aspect of life as well, but that's a completely different subject. But it's, it's, it's no problem to work wherever we are if we need to do something. So that gives a lot of freedom. When you have your monitoring system tied to your room, then you are also tied to that physical place within the world. So the advantages of using headphones, I would say, are bass response, cost and portability. Okay. So what are the disadvantages of using headphones? Well, there are a couple. I will talk about them and I will also present a solution for those. And the first one I would say is the social interaction. If you are used to working with people present when you are mastering or mixing, if you are collaborating in some way, then it might be a bit more awkward if you are going to sit with headphones on while working. But you can actually solve that by having a speaker set up that isn't perfect. You don't need the perfect speaker setup because maybe you need to discuss something about the editing or something about some balances or, or something that is, it doesn't require critical listening. It doesn't require you to have a full range monitoring system. Okay. 
then you can do that in speakers. And then when you need to dive into some details and make some more focused uh, decisions about the sound, then you put on your headphones and do that. But we have the same problem when using speakers, really. Most rooms have a sweet spot. You sit in the sweet spot and you get the correct representation of, of everything. And all the other spots within the room are good for listening, but they're not completely accurate. So you usually need to sit in the sweet spot uh, in order to correctly hear what's happening. And in the best rooms, this sweet spot is quite big. Maybe you can sit a couple of people at the desk and hear a fairly correct representation of what's going on. But in most rooms, we have a quite small sweet spot, to tell the truth. That, that's usually how it is. And if your client is sitting on the sofa in the back of the studio, then the client won't hear an, ac an accurate representation anyway. You need to switch places and put the client in the sweet spot. So we have sort of the same problems even when using speakers. So that's one disadvantage of using headphones the social interaction thing. And the other disadvantage of using headphones, and this is the most important one I would say, that is stereo representation. Because when we listen in speakers, when we have a traditional 60 degree speaker setup, you know when we have the same distance between ourselves and the speakers as the speakers have between them, then we get a equilateral triangle and we get a 60 degree setup. That's the standard setup that has been used for stereo for many decades. Anyway, when we are using that kind of setup, then both our ears will hear both of the speakers. Okay, so if we place a sound within one speaker only, we pan it fully to the left or fully to the right, then that sound will come out of only one speaker, but we will hear it with both our ears. So the ear that is closest to the speaker will hear the direct sound and then the other ear will hear a slightly delayed sound that is slightly filtered because our ear because our head is in the way so but both ears will hear that speaker but when we are listening in headphones th that's a completely different situation if we pan something fully to the left or fully to the right it will be heard only by that ear and not by the other so it will be a very unnatural kind of sound. And this is the biggest difference between listening in headphones and listening in speakers, the stereo representation. So when you are working in speakers, you have this stereo panorama that is extending from one speaker to the other. And if you have a mono source and you pan it around, then you will hear it moving from one speaker to the other, and you can place it in the middle and it will sound as if it's coming from between the two speakers. This is called the phantom center. It will sound as if it's coming from a point in between the speakers. Even though there isn't actually a speaker there, you will hear it as coming from there, and it's called the phantom center. So we have access to all these positions within the stereo image. But if we are listening in headphones and we pan something, then we will hear it if we pan it to the center, we will hear it from coming somewhere within our head. It sounds very unnatural. It sounds like it's within our head somewhere. If we pan it fully to the left or to the right, it will sound like it's coming from that side, but still within our head. It sounds very unnatural. There are very few situations in nature when we hear something with only one ear. Those situations are usually quite unpleasant. It's something that's happening very close to your ear and you usually don't want that. So it, it sounds kind of unnatural and not very pleasant, okay? So we can't really place anything in the stereo field when we are using headphones. And that's why things that we create in a speaker setup will translate much better than when we are using headphones. Because in speakers, we can make correct decisions about the stereo image. So if you have tried to produce things, mixing or mastering in headphones, and it might sound really good in your headphones, and then you take it to your speaker system and you listen to it and you don't recognize it, it doesn't sound good. The levels might be off, the panning might be off. It sounds strange. And that's because the translation is not very good when going from headphones to speakers. 
But the other way around, if you produce something in speakers and you make it sound good in speakers, then it will usually translate very well into headphones as well. It will not sound exactly the same because there are different stereo representations, but the decisions you make in speakers will usually translate very well to headphones as well. But the other way around is much more difficult, and that's due to the stereo representation. And that leads us to how do we solve this problem? Okay, so now we know that listening in headphones is superior in some areas, but in one critical area it's very inferior, and that's stereo representation. And that's the thing that we need to fix in order to have a good monitoring solution using headphones. And this is actually quite easy to fix. We need something that is called a crossfeed. A crossfeed is a process that will make sure that both ears hear the correct signal. So, for example, when we are listening to only one speaker, the crossfeed will make sure that the other ear also gets a bit of that signal. It will be delayed and filtered as if we were listening in a speaker setup. And if we make this crossfeed work properly, then our brain will interpret the sound as coming from speakers and we will get access to all these positions in the stereo image as well. The center image, the phantom center will work properly and we will get the correct width of the stereo image so we can pan things around within the stereo image and it will position itself in the correct places within the stereo image. So a proper crossfeed will actually solve this problem for us. And you might need to use a bit of imagination in this step as well, or at least get used to how it sounds. But you will find that when you start using crossfeed for monitoring in headphones, then you will, you will get that correct stereo representation. You will get the correct width of the stereo image, and you will be able to place things within the stereo image in a correct way. And we use a plugin called Can Opener from Goodhertz. It's a crossfeed plugin. It will emulate a speaker setup. You have some controls that you can tweak. And to my ears, this is the best sounding solution. There are other solutions as well. We have NX and we have iZone. We have a lot of different options. I haven't tried them all, but of those I have tried, I have found a good hertz can opener to be the most neutral. It doesn't color the sound as much. It's not quite as realistic as, for example, Waves NX. That sounds really realistic to my ears, but it also colors the sound quite a lot to my ears. So I, I've used NX quite a lot, but I prefer to use uh, can opener instead. I like that more. So that's, that's a good solution. And you, and you put this in your monitoring chain. You make sure that this will not end up on your master. So if you're using Reaper, for example, you can put it in your monitoring effect chain. That will keep it out of the signal path for your exports and everything. Otherwise, you just need to remember to bypass it before you export. And another thing you might need to use when you are using headphones for mastering is some sort of correction software. We use Reference from Sonarworks. This is a plugin that will correct the frequency response for your headphones. So for example, we use the Sennheiser HD 600s and they are fairly neutral, but they have some things going on in the low end. They need a bit more low end, I think, and it also have some things going on in the high end. And to my ears, the headphones sound much more flat and neutral when I have the Sonarworks enabled. I also use some additional correction when I'm mastering. I like to have a bit more low end and a bit more of the highest high end and also a bit less in the mids. That's sort of a personal preference that comes from tweaking this setup to sound more like our room used to sound like when we worked in that. That's the sound I'm used to. So if I'm mastering and I make all my decisions based on this kind of sound, then it will come out correctly at the end. And you will probably find your own preferences in this regard. So that leads us to another very important part, and that is what kind of headphones should I use? Well, as I said, we use these Sennheiser HD 600s. It's a really good headphone. They are not cheap, but they are 
cheap-ish compared to other headphones of this caliber and I really recommend them. And there are of course other headphones as well. What I found is if you have quite large headphones that go over the ears, so they surround the ears, and also have open back so that you can hear the room around you, that really helps. And if they usually have a large uh, diaphragms as well. So over ear, large diaphragm, open back headphones. Those are usually the kind of headphones that will work best for mixing and mastering. And the disadvantages of using open back headphones are of course that you, you need to be in a sort of quiet environment. You can't sit at your cafe and do your mastering, you need to be a, in a more quiet space. And there are of course other kinds of headphones that you can use as well. I've mastered quite a lot with these in-ear phones uh, from Ultimate Ears. Sound pretty good, but I find that uh, to be a bit claustrophobic in some sense. Uh, I really prefer having these open back headphones instead of uh, in-ear monitors. But that's also a way to go and these are much less uh, sensitive to environmental noises around you so you can do I usually use these when I'm in a more noisy environment and need to do some editing or things like that but if I need to work in a more noisy environment for some reason I really prefer using some sort of noise cancelling headphones closed uh, noise cancelling headphones and I find these to be quite good for reducing that claustrophobic feeling as well because the noise cancelling will reduce your own low-end self noises like when you talk or breathe or things like that so they're very comfortable I think. So these I use quite a lot for editing for example when I need to have a silent environment around me and hear fades and things correctly so that's also an option. But for critical listening for making more detailed analysis of the sound then I really prefer having these open back large over ear uh, headphones like the HD 600 those are my favorites and then it comes to what do you connect these headphones to you need a headphone amplifier and you need a DA converter that's really what you need and when I'm working I usually have this I usually have this MyTech uh, DA converter that has a really good built-in headphone amplifier I like that a lot I also have this uh, Cranesong Avocet monitoring controller that also has a very good headphone amplifier and a good DA converter. But you can get very far with pretty much any modern audio interface. Modern DA converters tend to sound really good even at the consumer level because DA converters and AD converters, the evolution of those have been tremendous in the last 10 or 20 years. So even, even a modest modern audio interface will sound very good, at least those I have tried. So if you have an audio interface that is made for music production, then you're pretty much good to go. You can start there at least and then get into that rabbit hole of trying out new things. And we also have this. This is an Oppo HA2 headphone amplifier that you can connect to your computer or to your phone. So it's an audio interface with a DA converter and a headphone amplifier. This sounds really good. It's made more for music listening. It doesn't have any inputs. It's not an audio interface made for music production primarily, but it's, uh, it sounds really good. So these are also some options that you can use. But really start with what you have. The thing you should avoid though is using the, the headphone out on your computer. Those are not made to sound good really. They're mostly made to be as efficient as possible. So you, you won't have enough output power or you won't have enough voltage actually to, to drive these kinds of headphones properly. And what you will notice then is that the bass will sound a bit distorted. You will not get that depth and that oomph in the low end. It will sound a bit tired in that area maybe a bit crunchy sometimes. So it's better to use a dedicated audio interface for, for these things. But that's, as I said, that's a deep rabbit hole to get into. So use whatever you have to get started because the most important thing is that you have good headphones and that you have a crossfeed and possibly a correction software of some kind. And then you will be good to go. Then it's basically about getting used to this environment of working and trusting the decisions you make. Because as always, when you're using a new monitoring environment, 
you should listen to your to your masters or your mixes in many places and see how does it translate because translation is the most important aspect of this but you will find that when you are using headphones in this way then you will find that your mixes and your masters will translate much better than using speakers because i would argue that this kind of setup using headphones will be much better will translate much better than many many studios or control rooms that are on the smaller side maybe don't have enough acoustic treatment maybe you are using smaller two-way speakers or maybe you are having problems in the low end or maybe there are stereo problems due to reflections uh, there are so many issues that can happen within a room unless it's properly built and that usually means quite an expensive room so if you are working in that kind of room which you probably are, then you will probably find that you get much better translation when using headphones in this way. Okay, so give this a try. I wouldn't be surprised if your mixes and masters will sound much better and translate much better when you have a proper monitoring environment. And this is very much achievable using headphones, much more achievable than using speakers. Okay, so let us know in the comments, are you using headphones for mixing or mastering? Uh, have you tried anything that I mentioned in this video? Did this help you? Did this video help you? I hope it did. Let us know in the comments. Uh, we really enjoy having these conversations with you. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button if you did enjoy this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.